Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and I want to show you how you can install sound matting into your trunk to cut road noise. All right, so let's talk about this project a little bit before we do it. Now, I, we're only gonna be doing the trunk today because I actually have a whole series of other videos that I highly recommend on how to install sound skins throughout your whole car, through the door, through the whole cabin bowl. I have a stage one, two, and three, and even a three plus video. But the one thing I didn't do at the time is I didn't do the trunk. Now, I had some material left over, and now that I've been driving for quite some time with my stage three install here into my M2C, I still hear a little bit of road noise, but since it's all behind me, I can tell it's coming from the trunk. So it only makes sense to take the leftover material that I have and go ahead and put it throughout the entire trunk uh, basin as well, all down through all of the different wells and so on. Now, your car may be a little bit different, but the process is gonna be essentially the same no matter what car you have. We're gonna be doing it on my M2C, you could do it on another BMW, or really any other car for that matter. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and jump in, check it out. Okay y'all, so here we are at the trunk and this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna move through it a little bit more rapidly than my other sound skins videos because I'm gonna assume that hopefully you've watched it, watched them as well. And so really what we're gonna do is take a look at here at the trunk. Obviously here at my MTC, I've taken the rear board off already just to give you a view of what this looks like in my car. Now, every BMW is gonna be different. Very commonly, the battery is over here on the right-hand side instead of here in the center like it is in my M2. And you, you know what you have here is really gonna depend on your model, but this still is gonna be a similar layout where we're gonna to wanna to lay in sound skins anywhere where we have bare metal. Now, a couple of things. So for example, in this case, I'm going to pull up these control modules and my fuse box here. They're 10 millimeter uh, screws holding it down, or, or excuse me, 10 millimeter nuts. There's a plastic nut on that one holding it down. You can see this power distri distribution box here also has a 10 millimeter plastic nut. You can see my power inflator in case I have a flat tire and I hope to never have to use this. Now, the one thing I am going to do is I'm gonna leave my battery in place. I'm not going to put sound skins in or around this at all. I don't wanna shift my battery around. I'm gonna leave that as is. The other thing I'm going to not do, so you can see my primary ground and my primary power right here. I'm not gonna disturb those at all. So my goal in this really is to get to as much bare metal as possible. And what you do here is really gonna depend on what you want for this. Now, the other thing I am also going to do is I'm gonna pull this black uh, plastic trim. There's a couple of little, those little expanding rivets here and here. I'm gonna pull my side carpets because I wanna lay sound skins all through those areas as well. So I'll show you that process, but I wanted to give you kind of a quick introduction to what the space looks like before we do it. Your car may be a little bit different, but it's gonna be similar enough that I think you can use this on pretty much any car. Now, in addition, we do have our uh, sensor right here. This is for, for your remote access sensor. It has a Torx bit. It's probably gonna be a T20 from the look of it that you put right down through the center and you can pull that up. Any place where I have an exposed post, I'm gonna cut the sound skins around the post so all of these modules can go back down on really nicely, okay? So the very first things I'm going to do is pull those 10 millimeters so I can lift those modules or get them ready to be moved. And then I'm gonna show you, at least in my car and very similar to probably your car, how to take the side carpets off. All right, y'all, so let's catch up on where we are. So I've loosened up everything. This, this power distribution box is loose. There's two 10 millimeter uh, plastic nuts on either side. This one is a little snug to your power. Just be careful with that. I've pulled out my power inflator, my fuse box, and this box is now loose. The 10 millimeter nuts, plastic nut there is all off and everything's loose. Really quickly, I am noticing that there's some dirt and a little bit of debris under some of these. You're gonna wanna wipe or vacuum all that out before you put the sound skins in. Now in my car, I've got four, one, two, three, four plastic expanding rivets that hold down this, this black plastic plate. We have to pull this to be able to get to the side carpet. On the side carpet right here, there is a plastic cargo hook with an expanding ribbon in it, so go ahead and pull that out. And back there is that metal loop uh, cargo uh, tie down right there that then when you pull the pl cover off, you have a, 40, a T40 Torx bolt holding that down on both sides. So now all of that is loose. And you also, like I said, you also have this Torx bolt right here. I haven't loosened this up yet. I'm gonna do so. Like I said, I'm not gonna touch my battery. But now that those four are out, you can pull this 
back piece off. Now, I've already partially done it just, just to show you. You do have to fit it back out from underneath this big rubber gasket that goes around so it's a little tight as it comes off. You don't have to open these two doors. That's only if you need to get to these bolts, which is not part of what holds that plastic trim down. So you can pull that off, take it safely aside, and then we're gonna to look to take the side carpet off next. All right, so once you have the, the back trim off here, you can start to get your carpet out. Now, in the M2's case, you have this power port in the back, so as you start to pull your carpet, you wanna reach behind and unplug the power port. Also, right up there in the corner, there's one more plastic expanding rivet that you're gonna to wanna to pull out. Now, when you pull your carpet, you've got a couple of different options. Now, you can pull the whole thing out if you want, but it can be a bit of a problem sometimes, and especially there's still a plastic rivet all the way up there at the front. But you really have two choices. You can either pull the entire carpet as you start to fit, to pull this lead edge, and this will start to come away. It pulls out from the rubber gasket, out from underneath the rubber gasket, because as you can see on this side, it's still underneath, for example. It starts to pull out. You can pull the whole thing. Now, in the M2, it isn't bad to pull the whole carpet. It's not hard. These shapes aren't, aren't overly complex and hard to get back in. There are some models, like some of the X3s, pulling this carpet is really difficult. So it's gonna depend on what you want to do. Now, in my case, I'm gonna pull the whole thing once I pull that, that plastic rivet up there at the lead. But the other thing you also can do is that if you get this back edge, you can always peel the entire back edge away and you can get to almost all of the bare metal here on the inside, right? So you could potentially do it without pulling the entire carpet. So keep that as an option. If you find you're really struggling with the carpet and can't seem to get it out, go ahead and just peel it back, secure it so you can work all on the insides of these bowls to put down the sound skins. But in my case, I'm gonna pull that expanding rivet and pull the whole carpet out. Obviously all the carpets out, and I'm really excited about this. This is gonna go really easy, really simple. Th these are really not complex spaces uh, to be able to cover. And in the M2 case, I, I really would take all the carpet out because it's gonna give you the ability to work much more cleanly on some of these exposed edges. So now all you need to do is start laying out and measuring out sound skins. And I'll, I'll grab a piece just to show an example here in a second. I'll probably start here on the easiest just to show you this back plate. Um, make sure that you measure cleanly. I'm also a bit of a stickler when I install the sound skins. I always install them with the logos in the same direction. It, you know, no one else is ever gonna know but me, but I like doing it right. Now, also, if you look down this side, this is where that storage compartment is. If you also notice, this black frame can, can potentially come out entirely to give you a little bit more space to get down into that well. But the one thing I am gonna do first is I'm gonna get my shop vac and take out any of the dust and little bit of debris. Um, it's so small, it probably wouldn't interfere, like here's some pine needles, uh, interfere with the sound skins because it's very adhesive, but I just don't want any problem there. So I'm gonna get my vacuum, vacuum all the space out. Now, one thing I do wanna point out here, for example, right here, we've got a little plug, which I suspect is probably a drain plug. So don't cover things that really matter. <laughs> so when I put the sound skins down into this piece, I'm gonna cut a circle for where this drain plug is. And when I press the sound skins down, this ridge will leave a very clear ridge of where it is. So, and then I will cut around it just to leave it open. I'm also still gonna to, uh, bolt this or unbolt the sensor right here. I'm gonna leave this power brick down. I'm not gonna get underneath that. There's not enough space underneath for it to, to not be sitting cockeyed with sound skins underneath. I'll leave the foam in place. I'll leave the white plastic in place. So I'm anywhere that really I see bare metal. Like I will come underneath this wiring harness and down. I'll go down through this well, down this side, all the way across. So I'm gonna start piecing this in. So let me get one piece and I'll show it. I'm not gonna show installation of every single piece, but more so of just kind of when it's done. All right, so let's start with this back section first. I actually have some scrap left over that fits almost perfectly, but if you have a fresh roll or you're just doing this, you would take a tape measure, measure across and measure depth, cut out the rectangular piece and then set it into place. Now, this back curve is not an even straight line, so you'd want to take the straight line across the top, lay the piece in, draw your line, and then cut the curve with a pair of scissors. So you just lay this piece in really nicely. You can see I've got a little bit of excess here that I'm gonna cut off on that edge and I'm gonna cut off on this lead edge, pull the backing and just lay it into place. You can even do things like, so for example, where this 
battery uh, support bar is. There actually is a little bit of air gap under one edge. So I've drawn, drawn underneath the edge and I'm gonna cut a little L flap like this that I'm gonna slot underneath the bar. So the bar can stay in place, I'm not gonna move it at all, but the little bit of where there's a little bit of air gap, I can actually get it to fit in. You can see this is where the, the nut for it goes. I'm gonna cut around this a little bit. I just press the matting down through it. I'm just gonna cut a little circle so that nut is exposed and I can get to it easily if I ever need to but all really straightforward. Also, just as a quick side note, I went ahead and pulled my amp from the side, vacuumed underneath, cleaned it out, because there's enough space with the amp frame itself that I can fit sound skins under, underneath it too. Now, one thing, just so I don't forget, if you're not familiar with it, these are vents. On both sides, you have these vents that open between your quarter panels and the trunk. Don't cover those. So when you lay sound skins in, and I'm gonna put them up that wall right there, I'm not gonna cover those vents. You don't wanna interfere with any venting between your quarter panels and your trunk or any airflow that you've got potentially there. Okay, so make sure not to do that. So now it's really just, a, really just an effort of starting to piece all this in. So I'm gonna start laying all this out. I'm gonna secure this piece down. I'll lay some more of the pieces down, but it really is just measure cut, measure cut. And like I said, I'm gonna take this one a little bit faster considering that it's kind of a follow-up to all the other work that I've done, but it really is just measure, stick and peel. All right, so let me get this down. Let me get some more of the other pieces down and I'll show you what that looks like. All right guys, so forgive the afternoon sun. Got some pretty heavy shadows right now too, but as you can see, it's done. Underneath all the modules, the fuse box, down where the inflator would be, down under the wells up over there, down under the wheel wells, underneath the amp right now, which is under real deep shadow, so you're not gonna be able to see it. But all in all, it's done. And you just measure, cut, peel and stick, and rinse and repeat through the, through the whole scenario. So at this point, go ahead and put your carpet back in. Um, I went ahead and pulled my battery just, just to make sure. I was kind of worried about touching contacts there. Uh, so I went ahead and pulled my battery. If you did that, plug it back in and uh, you're gonna be good to go. All right, so one last look before we finalize and button it up. Now, one quick hint, when you put the carpet on, tip the far end in first so it gets under the bolster, then it lays back into place really nicely. Don't forget to uh, bring the gaskets, your seals up and over the top of the carpet here. When you put the plastic back here as well, make sure that you pull the, the rubber gasket out and it lays on top. If not, you'll have a gap. So with that said, you should be all done. Go ahead and button up, put your tools away. Well done. All right, y'all, all done. Go ahead and get, clean up and put your tools away. As you can tell, this is a really simple install and I did go through it fairly quickly because I do have my stages one, two, and three videos out there as well that shows in a lot greater detail, really, you know, measuring very closely, but it really is to simply measure, cut out a section of the sound skins you need for that particular part, peel it, stick it down, make sure that it fits in and move on. So Soundskins is really easy to work with. I'm really grateful to, to them for making such a fantastic product. And I took my car out for a quick drive and it really did cut out that last little bit kind of a, a road hiss, that noise. And this is gonna improve your speakers. This is gonna improve your sound system. It can also even just improve your, your average daily drive as you cut down on background noise between your tires, other cars, and just road noise in general. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I have a ton of content coming that I cannot wait to show you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next project.